Welcome back to another weekend. Last time done the rear brakes. They're already getting this surface rust film. Um, so the back is done. I'm going to concentrate on the front and hopefully get it all done. Um, I still got water in the cooling system that they put in to rinse the old uh, antifreeze coolant that was the wrong type so I'm going to drain that now this filling oh, it's so hard can't even get it off now um, the thermostat housing with a filling cup the top of the thermostat housing is not round it's gone like oval shape cup is very hard to, to take out to get off um, it's all actually broken with a spring let me try and get out two hands right so that's one part of the cup that's another part of the cup and that's another part of the cup it's just all gone and it's actually um, letting water through so it's bad and that is actually like oval shape it's not round I don't know if camera can pick it up it's actually longer that way shorter this way so <clears throat> drain the system I got a second hand genuine because I don't think that one there is genuine so I got second hand genuine good condition thermostat housing Because this cup has got perished rubber gasket. You can see it's all breaking up. Got replacement rubber gas uh, not rubber gasket but the whole cup. So that's gonna go on there. It's gonna be nice and easy to replace. Got new thermostat. the gasket and got also in one of the earlier videos you probably remember this was a radiator fan resistor that was gone so I'm gonna replace that as well well try to do all of that today and then I got filters uh, cab filter or pollen filter, air filter, oil filter, new coolant, new oil, put wheel arches back on and yeah once the wheel arch is back on need to sort of refurb these wheels a little bit give them a bit of rub down and blacken them all up and wheels can go back on you can book it for MOT so it's not much left not much left not at all so first thing I'm gonna drain drain the coolant down on this coolant hose bottom hose once that is draining and dripping I'm gonna remove air filter housing battery box just remove this stuff from here so I can actually have better access to um, to our thermostat housing right, hose is undone I just let it all go down on the ground it's just the water as you can see um, this is like six to seven water run through the system and I don't think it's got any more antifreeze or coolant in it it's all been rinsed off
Now, air intake removed, uh, battery removed, ECU removed, battery box removed. Now we have full access to that thermostat housing. You can see one bolt is there, one is underneath there, one is on this side here. You've got access to all hoses, to absolutely everything what's needed here. So, it should be easy job now. A little note for removal of ECU within the battery box where ECU is located there is this little holding tab so what you need to do is with a either finger or screwdriver pull the tab towards the battery compartment and then you can lift um, ECU enough so you can pull so you can pull these uh, fixing tags locking tags out of the connectors and then you can pull connectors upwards so got two of them two locking tags because we, when it's within the box you can't pull the tags out far enough to lift off uh, the connectors so yeah that's that bit now so now I believe it's 10 millimeters It is. So I'm slacking them off. That's tight. I'm only using my little quarter inch ratchet because I don't want to put excessive force on. Okay, that's slackened. Get the other one. Yeah. We at this stage I'm gonna remove this hose that goes to heating matrix in the cab. still there, they're just all uh, slackened off. This is handy little tool, flexi. And works with quarter inch sockets.
this out still can be a bit of challenge that's why it's a very good idea to get that battery out you see thermostat's got some sediments on and stuff might be still all right but I'm not gonna risk it if I'm coming this far I replace thermostat this hose on the bottom get that out Yes. Yo, oh, that looks ugly. Just looking at any markings. There's something here saying AV. 0619 so I would imagine that's either June 2019 or sixth week of 2019 AV don't know what manufacturer that would be but you can see the top is completely sort of deformed egg-shaped so not good hopefully a genuine part will actually be better so let's have a closer look so here we are so we can see three holes and we get something pointy screwdriver one hole there one hole there and the third one there they're fixing bolts and this is that little like a little round bit there, big round bit there for our thermostat. It's got quite a few sediments and a bit of rust around. Let's try clean this up. Sand down with fine sandpaper as well, like a wet and dry clean it up but first I'm going to scrape it off with like a flat scraping knife just a little bit of gentle scrape Hopefully with correct coolant now, uh, it's going to clean up all these holes and everything. I'll try and when winter is coming now, probably after winter, the springtime, to replace coolant again, and hopefully that will um, sort of flush the system further and clean it all up. I'm sorry if I got in the way of camera. gentle scrape off of all these sediments brass wire brush I don't want to use steel wire brush in aluminium
bit of so a feel. Yeah, much, much better. Now, just a bit of floor. essential to have a nice clean seating with any gasket. Don't have to go mad. It doesn't take a long time. It's not big effort. As you can see, a minute. And it's done. Close look. There you go. It's just a bit of discoloration on aluminium, but that's really nice and smooth now and flat. And no sediments of any sort there. Well, not on that surface, not on the cotton. Whilst this all this exposed, let's have a closer look at on uh, air bleeding points so we have the upper and lower hose for heating matrix that's the upper one the lower one is down there and it goes with this little steel tube across right let me just camera come on camera so you can see it down there it goes underneath um, uh, uh, what's it called temperature sensor we want to call it thermostat for a moment and as you follow with that lower steel tube you will come to this point here in front of the engine well, let's get the camera around somehow in there are we seeing that yes there there's a little screw there on top of that pipe that's one bleeding point and trying to see it from here right let's clear that if we can there it is it's right there and access to that is literally to this gap here so this gap here you have clear access I need to zoom out again right that's that there that there it's a little screw and you can see with the screwdriver I got clear access there obviously you can't use screwdriver it's a little 
I would say eight millimeter on here well at least here it's eight millimeter little um, bolt so that's one bleeding point the other one is on the upper heating matrix hose it's that one there big plastic one and I believe the same one is supposed to be here but someone replaced it with just a big star bolt I was already using that to bleed um, yeah works fine so let's get it from wider perspective so one is here one is there on the upper hose that can be accessed here on this side right next to big battery box it's there and the other one is down there that little thingy I'm just touching with a screwdriver there that one is the most often missed and it's hardest to spot so I've got my replacement I mean this is got completely different markings it's a genuine one and it's 1806 18 no no can't get that it's supposed to be genuine one no, I believe it is but I just need to get some numbers of it it's got long number here I didn't compare it to whatever it needs to be anyway Need a new thermostat. There's one thing with mechanical thermostats. Um, they got this little bypass valve here to get rid of the airlocks. Thermostat, I mean this one has got this sort of shape gasket. Um, so it's very hard to muddle it up, but when they're without gasket and it's just a round, round thermostat and you've got that little valve there that valve needs to be positioned up within the housing because that's a little air, air lock, air bleed valve so now seat it gently and firmly into the housing housing goes like that so you can see that the thermostat is positioned correctly with a little valve on top. And then just try to get the main hose on. Yep. Pass the cables. Might get on the way. Here as well, we're passing the cables, get the heating matrix hose on. That's it, negotiate it in. Make sure this, the hoses are turned nicely so there is no any fight with them so it sits nicely where it's supposed to sit then I can put the bolts in just finger tight first Make sure this is still moving before you put all three of them.
trim up. Right. And that's tight. Check the last one again. Yeah, that's tight. Right. Now I can put Hmm, ah, there is looking for my auto pump pliers. Put clips back on. Cool. That's back on. Now a bit of dirt in this tank here, expansion vessel. So I'm going to take that off and uh, try to clean it up. There's only one bolt on the top. gonna give it a quick wash rinse I'm not gonna go mad on it just a quick rinse it's amazing what a bit of water and few pebbles inside and a bit of shake can do clean just a half a dozen dozen pebbles water Put a palm of the hand over the opening and give it a good shake and then rinse it all out. Make sure the pebbles are out. It's brilliant. Okay, little hose back on. There's actually a little clip for it. It's never been on. Let's clip that on. Yeah, nice. Now I just cable tie a few cables here that have been a bit loose stop them from rubbing and uh, causing damage later on now um, battery box had two fixings two bolts one here one there and this one here was rusted a bit so I cleaned it all up 
I'm gonna put a bit of a bit of grease on them inserts, thread inserts. So this is like a plastic body and it's got like a brassy looking uh, thread inserts. And then uh, can put battery, battery box back in. There was another insert here, but that one is long gone, so only two. So, a bit of jiggle wriggle. goes on one side one clip another cable to the other clip something is stopping it to go down no that's good now two 10 mil head bolts to go on the back and to grease up holes da -da 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 -da. As I said, there should be one here and one here. The insert on that one is gone. But here it goes into engine mount. And I think it's like five or six millimeter thread. So I'll get a bolt with a washer there. Must have one somewhere laying around. And here is That's that one there. I found a bolt with big washer. wasn't there but it's supposed to be so get that done cool now whilst I'm here I've got this connector for oxygen sensor to go back on all right it's plugged in Fuel line. Uh, what else? That's that's all it now. There. Right now I can fit ECU back in, in air and a battery, and then air filter housing box. I'll put new air filter in, same time. Always be careful with ECUs. They're sensitive piece of equipment. Thank you. 
Right, that's secured into place. Now the battery. Just going to clean the terminal a little bit. Paper. So, battery now. Plug these connectors. Right. Okay. Bleed the tube. It's not bleeding much, really. I think I might divert that. Maybe not. No, that's tight. This is symmetrical. Oh no, it's not actually symmetrical because looking that way is symmetrical, but this way one leg is lower down than the other one, so the lower leg goes closer to positive terminal. From above it looks symmetrical. Right, up next, battery cover, and a few clips missing. Well, it is what it is. An 
no car, there's no point of changing absolutely everything. Clips and the battery cover, I don't think they're that essential. And battery cover is broken a couple places, but I think it's fine. Blow some dust off. Another bolt missing. All these plastic parts, when they got bolts missing, can cause some kind of rattling and noises when you're driving. So there's one bolt here. Cost again as a five or six mil this big washer it's right in there and that causes this to rattle a little bit so I'm gonna put another bolt there so my selection of bolts let's try that one One, I'm going to choose a washer. It will need to be a fairly big washer. So, for my washer box selection, I found a big washer. Solid. That's good. Right now, I'm going to fit new filter. It's just a, it's a Bosch filter. Nice and clean. Take 
All right, just put a nice new filter on. It's a Bosch filter. I thought I pressed recording whilst actually it didn't go through. And just tightening up intake tube. Cover. The two cl clips and lugs on the left hand side. Oops, that's what I was trying to avoid. Uh, let me try to put camera. Right, it's a bit more stable there. So I'm just trying to get, get it hooked. Yes, it's quite tight fit, but it's doable. Eight millimeter. Clip back in that clips there. Yeah, cool. That's connected. It's all connected. Right now, I'm going to reconnect the pipe underneath the radiator. So now, filling up with coolant. I got the correct grade of coolant. Um, now, this is 100% um, concentrated, so I have to dilute it. Dilution table is here. Um, now I'm going to go about that on there, 33%. 33% to bring it down to minus 22. I live in South England, we never even get to minus 12. So about a third, third of coolant, rest of the water. Nice and easy. A handy milk jug chopped up into funnel. And wedged in here. Perfect fit.
So now I got one, two, three, four, five liters. So if I put two, two and a half liters in. So as you can see, coolant is sitting there. right on the top it's not moving because there is airlock so I'm gonna open up one of the ble bleed valves and as I open the bleed valve it should just sink in there it is So, I only managed to put about half a litre in, one pint. <laughs> try to open another bleed valve. This is now a bit iffy because I need to hug the camera right right the breed the valve this one is on top of the upper uh, heating matrix hose I can hear air hissing out I really want to go down to this is one two three I want to go just above around three liter mark to be left So we're going to top up expansion tank. Right, distilled water from our condensing tumble dryer. I love it because you get just continuous supply of 
distilled water all the time. We use it for mopping hard floors. Leaves nice streak free finish. Use it like this for a car, washing windows, all sorts of things. It does help if I lift this end up here on the other side, another hose, which is upper radiator hose. And just slowly. Keeping an eye on the upper heating matrix hose as well, on that valve. I think this hose here is full. Oops, a little bit more. Yep, it's coming out. The radiator is full. Let's bolt in. And yes, the upper hose here is overfilling. Okay. I need more, more water. I'm gonna bring that. Right, that little bolt, by just doing that, it snapped. And it's going somewhere underneath, it's just a bolt head. 
the bolt head snapped. So, I'm not getting that out. It tells me that in past, on this car, no one ever used that bleed, bleed bolt or bleed screw. So, I just hope and probably will, engine will purge air to normal use because that will be just a little bit left. On the, on the return from uh, from the heater. Shame. That is shame. Hmm. Well, without taking all this apart and trying to weld something on it and trying to extract it, I don't think I can do any. Hmm. No. Okay. So I'm just going to try to burp the coolant system. The Blackburn Rovers, former Southampton forward Lexi Lloyd Smith. <laughs> Now the temperature gauge is going about halfway up. Now I'm going to put this cup on. Bleed valve there. It's closed, no leaks. This valve here, no leaks. Hard to see around. Heaters are on. And it's blowing nice warm air.
it's almost reached the temperature, so I'm going to turn it off and let it cool down and settle.